Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. So understanding GraphQL is not very hard. You just need to understand two terms, schema and resolvers. That's it. Okay, I will take like I will take the long path to teach you all these things because we are going into the deep. Okay, so GraphQL server. First of all, if we talk about the basic building blocks of a GraphQL server, then what all they are. So we'll talk about types. So you have to define types. You have to define queries, you have to define mutations. All these are actually the primary building blocks of any GraphQL server. Types uh, and then we have queries and then we have mutations. Okay, types you can say, okay, we are creating user as a type, course as a type, product as a type right so these are actually the type definitions we are going to add queries like whenever you need to fetch the data you will actually ask graphql server okay this is my query give me the data based on this like get user by id get all users and give me only these two properties from a particular user field using graphql queries you can request what you need not everything that is the advantage because we can ask for whatever we need, nothing more, nothing less using GraphQL queries. And here using GraphQL client, we will be sending the query, we will be sending the mutations and subscription. I didn't talk about the subscription, but subscription is something where you can actually monitor the change happening on the particular type. Okay, so we have a queries just to get the data, mutations to update the state and this whole thing we can actually cover inside two things schema and resolvers okay if i just increase it then block which will decide what data need to send back right so we have types we have query we have mutation so resolvers so all the definitions of the type of the queries and mutation will be defined in the resolvers resolvers are nothing but you can say as a functions okay i have two queries and two mutations then you have to define these queries and mutations in the resolvers resolvers will decide what data need to send what data need to update so with the help of these types queries and mutations what you will do you will actually construct a schema so this schema will be passed to the graphql server so there are actually two major blocks you can say one is the schema so all these three combined all these three combines covers as a schema considered as a schema and this is already a name from the name resolver right so these are the two major building blocks we have one is the schema which is like okay a graphql schema which considers the types user type course type and all and then you will do the queries okay uh, give me all users, give me all courses, give me uh, all universities, mutations, add user, update course, add new universities, all these will be mutations, right? So this, the first half of this block is known as a schema and then second half of this block is a resolver and when we have both the things, we can actually create a GraphQL server. What the GraphQL server needs is the schema and the resolver and using this we will expose the graphql queries and mutation for the graphql client we have okay now we will talk about the graphql workshop and we will start talking about what is graphql right we are talking about graphql query language right so whatever we are going to send from this graphql client so we discussed about that that, it, that we are going to send a query and mutation here something like this right inside this query you will be requesting okay I need ID I need name all these attributes so these are called GraphQL query similarly you will be creating the mutations and all right so this is nothing but GraphQL query language it will tell you this language will tell you how to write a queries how to write a mutations how to request a data how to change the state of a data okay so graphql is the query language for your apis so this word is really very true once you know everything like how we are defining the types how we are defining the schema queries and mutation we end up doing nothing but we are defining 
the language for our APIs. Okay, so basic definition of GraphQL. Now, this is what we are actually doing, right? These are the resources. We are actually getting these resources from the server side, right? So from different clients, we are sending a query. GraphQL server is there. It will be actually can fetch the data from anywhere. Either it can be an HTTP call, database, REST APIs, from the file, from anywhere. I mean, this is what Node.js do, right? It's like a Node.js code below to this GraphQL server and using Node.js, you can talk to external API, can talk to the database, can talk to some file system, the cloud server, anything, right? So this is what your GraphQL server is doing. So you will send a request and you will get the response back, right? But how we are getting the data with the rest? Now here you will identify also the again difference. Here I make the call, then I again make the another call, then based on that I'm making another call just to show the data, right? So I end up making like four different calls and this call can be nested like from one call I'm getting the ID and I'm just using that ID to call the another request, right? Similarly, we are making this. This is your actually mobile client. Okay, it is, it is now still loading, right? because we will keep getting this data. And what we are doing is we are getting the four different JSON objects for, from four different clients, right? So it's like additional overhead and not good for our mobile client because we are actually dependent on the four network calls. So how we do this with the GraphQL? So this is called my query. You see this left hand side, this is my query which I will send in the HTTP post forward slash GraphQL resource and the endpoint will be the same forward slash GraphQL nothing else because whatever you are requesting is inside the HTTP body in the HTTP rest always the GraphQL tells you everything but here GraphQL uh, here the endpoint will be forward slash GraphQL in the body you will specify the query and mutations okay so now you just specify okay I need a lift which is name uh, panorama and just give me these fields only so I'm requesting only these uh, status fields and trails is a nested object. I'm just requesting this much data, nothing more, nothing less. And I will get the same set of data. So no additional data, no uh, round trip calls to the server. All these things are not happening with this, right? So this is the advantage of using GraphQL, which will just identify like we are just getting a single JSON object. Our mobile client is happy, right? So we are making like uh, how we change the data with the rest using HTTP post, delete, patch, right? We send uh, the headers, the body and the HTTP methods. How we change the data using GraphQL, we are actually making the mutations. Queries are same as HTTP get, mutations are same as HTTP put, HTTP delete, HTTP patch because we are updating the state here. So we are actually going to do the GraphQL mutations and it will actually update the state and it will give us back. Okay. So this is pretty much we have for this. Instead of GraphQL queries, you will start doing the mutations, queries response and you can call different functions. Okay. So that is all about in this video. Next video, we will take one more slide and after this, we can get started how to create a basic GraphQL server. Understanding is more, you can actually look at the code and you will understand everything very easily. What I need is schema, which contains type, query, mutation, and resolvers. So I need, once I have these both the things, I can just create the instance of GraphQL server by adding the library and just starting the HTTP server, that's it.